Welcome back, guys. We're going to continue along in the stoichiometric chapter. Um, you'll find this in any stoichiometry chapter of any textbook that you look at. This is going to be the empirical and molecular formula stuff. As always, I'm going to put the problem that I'm asking in the uh, comments below or in the notes section of the video, so please feel free to check there. Also, I'm going to put the very last page, I'm going to put a uh, another problem. It's essentially the same type of problem. I've just changed the numbers a little bit. So feel free to do that one. Uh, use this video as a guide and you can put your answers in the comments if you wish to help others who view this. So without further ado. After an elemental analysis of an unknown compound, it is determined to contain 50% carbon, 5.61% hydrogen, and 44.4% oxygen. What is the empirical formula of this unknown compound? And the second question asks about the molecular formula. We'll get to that. We're not going to worry about that right now. So we've got percentages. We need to get a formula. We're always going to start with a percentage. That is what's going to be provided by the, uh, by the question. From there, we can work our way through. Each of the next couple of slides will kind of go through each part of this. Each arrow represents a different calculation. But it's all very straightforward and it's always going to follow this method. So let's start with percent to gram. So I'm going to show you the plan right now and we'll execute it on the coming slides. So if we're going for percent to gram, we are going to assume assume 100 grams. Okay, so if we assume 100 grams, essentially what that is doing is, well, if I have a pile of material, forgive my drawing, if I have a pile of material and it's 100 grams and I tell you to take uh, I don't know, 25% of the pile. Well, if you take 25% of the pile, essentially what you're going to do is you're going to go in there and you would grab onto uh, 25 grams of material. So essentially, 25% gets converted directly to grams, and that is what we're going to do. So by assuming 100 grams, we can simply say, well, our percentages are just simply going to convert to grams. Okay, good. Next up, so let me clear that. Next, going from grams to moles. Grams to moles, once again, this is going to be just using your molecular mass or you're going to convert the way we know how using conversions. Okay, so we're using a molar mass. Actually, more appropriately, it's going to be an atomic mass or atomic weight because we're dealing with individual atoms. So we're going to deal with carbon, which weighs 12.01, and just carbon. So atomic mass or molar mass, but we're still going to use our conversions, the conversions that we know how to do. Um, if you need help, there's going to be a video attached either now or in the future. So, okay, so those are the first two steps. Assume 100 grams, then second step is we convert to atomic mass, and then finally going from moles to our formula, well, we are basically going to just plug in to the formula, we'll divide, and finally we'll simplify. So these are the methods that we're going to use. Uh, in our case, it's going to be CX, HY, O, Z. We need to solve for these numbers right here, all right, and those are, of course, going to be moles, molar quantities. So once we get to moles, they're going to actually get plugged right in and we can proceed from there. So that's our plan. Step one, step two, and then step three. So it's just very straightforward, one after the other, and we can kind of plug through this. So let's start, let's start by going percent to grams. So we start with 50% uh, carbon. We have five point 61% hydrogen and 44.4% oxygen. Fantastic. And as, as I said, if we assume 100 grams, in this case, I'm going to convert these things. I will have 50.0 grams of carbon. I'll have 5.61 grams of hydrogen and 44.4 grams of oxygen. Okay? So, Fantastic. That is where we are. That is where we start. Very easy. Uh, if you add all of this up, make sure, well, either side, just make sure that it adds up to 100, 100 grams, grams in this case, or 100% on this side. Uh, if it doesn't, that means we're missing a component and we have to add that in. Okay, so sometimes a question will 
give you two, let's say it just gives us carbon and hydrogen, but it doesn't have my oxygen, well, I can assume from the formula that it does in fact have oxygen in it. I have to make the assumption that the oxygen makes up the rest of it. So sometimes you do miss that percentage, you just have to assume it's there. Moving on. Next up, grams to moles. So we had 50.0 grams and we want to convert to moles. So we'll set up a conversion. There we go. We want to end up in moles. In this case, moles of carbon. So 50 grams of carbon. What is the molar mass? 12.01 grams per one mole. Where did I get this? This came from the periodic table. Okay, so that came from the periodic table. That's where you should be looking. Grams cancels. We're left with moles. 50 divided by 12.01 is going to give me 4.13 moles of carbon. And we're going to proceed the rest of the, the same way through for everything else. So 61 grams of hydrogen and multiply that by its molecular weight. So one mole over 1.01 .01 grams of hydrogen equals grams of hydrogen cancel and I get left with 5.55 moles of hydrogen. Fantastic. Last one, you should be able to do this at this point. 44.4 grams of oxygen. Set it up. 16 grams of oxygen, one mole of oxygen. Once again, I'm getting these numbers from the periodic table and you get 2.78 moles of oxygen. So here would I here I have my moles of all the different materials. Okay, this is important. The fact that I have moles of all the different materials uh, well in any chemical formula and that's what we're getting to next. In any chemical formula all of those subscripts are just moles of a substance. So if we're looking at something like glucose C6H12O6 this is basically saying well I have six moles of carbon. I have 12 moles of hydrogen. I have 6 moles of oxygen. Okay, so all that is is a all the subscripts are are moles and the good news is we do in fact have moles. So if we look at our molar quantities, well, our, we know our formula contains some amount of carbon, some amount of hydrogen, some amount of oxygen. All right, so now we're just going to plug in. So Going from the mole to the formula, first step is to, well, plug it in. So here's my carbon. Carbon is 4.13. My hydrogen, well, that number turned out to be 5.55. And then finally, oxygen, which turned out to be 2.78. There we go. So that's what we start with. Of course, we can't have decimals, so we're going to have to get rid of the decimals. So step one, we're going to divide. All right, so we divide by the lowest number that we have, so 2.78 in this case, lowest number of moles. And the reason we do that is because if we divide by the lowest number, we'll always end up with, well, that number will always become 1. So 2.78 over 2.78, that'll give us a number of 1, and that is what we're looking for. So divide it out, and we're going to come up with some numbers. So this here, so carbon, turns into uh, 1.49. Hydrogen uh, turns into 2.00. And then, of course, oxygen, anything divided by itself is equal to 1. So oxygen turns into 1. Well, now we have to round ever so slightly. We see the carbon 1.49. We could just simply call that carbon 1.5, hydrogen 2, and oxygen 1. So now the last step we're going to have to simplify. What can I multiply this by in order to cancel out the 1.5, in order to turn it into a whole number? Our formula can't contain decimals, so we have to remove them. So if I take this 1.5 and multiply it by 2, I'm going to get a 3. You essentially always want to multiply by something in order to remove those decimals. What I end up with is C3H4O2. There we go. That, at the end of the day, is my empirical unit. So that's my empirical and that is pretty much done. The next part however if I want 
you to give me a molecular formula. I need to provide you with this number. So the fact that it weighs 2.16.2 grams per mole, I need to provide you with that information. So what do we know so far? We're looking for the molecular formula. Okay. But we do know that it does weigh uh, 216.2 grams per mole. How do we know that? Well, it came from the information in our problem. All right. What do we know about the empirical unit? Well, we know the empirical unit is made up of three carbons, okay, four hydrogens, and two oxygens. The question is, how much bigger is the molecular formula than the empirical? Because remember, the empirical is a smaller version of it. So the question is, what do I have to multiply this by in order to get to my molecular unit? So if I calculate this out, if I write the mass of my molecular unit out, I end up with 72.07 grams per mole. Okay, my, my empirical unit, three carbons, four hydrogens, two oxygens, weighs 72.07. And the question is, what do I have to multiply this by in order to get 216? The good news is we've got an easy way of doing that. This is the formula, N, and this is, this is the N that I'm looking for. Okay, so this is the N I'm going after. N is equal to the uh, molecular, mass in this case, or weight, over the empirical mass. All right, well, we do that out, we get 216.2 grams per mole, divided by 72.07 grams per mole. And when I plug that into the calculator, you end up with three. So what this means is this number is going to be substituted in. That's going to give us our molecular formula. So we now know what our molecular formula is going to be. Our molecular formula is going to be three times our empirical unit. So C9H12O6. There we go. There is my molecular unit. Okay. So straightforward, grams, just percent to grams, grams to moles, moles to formula, simplify it out so you have whole numbers. And then the molecular unit, well, that has to be provided for you. Here's the other uh, question, as promised. Please try to solve this. You can follow through this video again and follow uh, using these numbers and see if you can get the right answer. I'm not going to provide you the right answer, but you can post it in the comments below and I'll, I'll respond or hopefully someone else will. I can't guess that's kind of the point. Um, but thank you for watching. Once again, if you have any questions, comments, you know, feel free to leave them. Please be nice. I just started doing this and uh, you know, I look forward to making more of these in the future.